Father Jehovah, God, gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, help us to learn the lesson of faith. Help us to be better servants to you. Quicken us from our sin debt. Grant us knowledge of unconditional love. Grant us the wisdom to get rid of our opinions and get your opinion, Father. God, help us to get our weapons off our brothers and point them back at Satan. In Jesus' name, devil, get your hands off my family. Get your hands off my health, my life, my friends, my finances. In Jesus' name. The only thing, Satan, you can have permission is to touch the bottom of my feet as I leave footprints on your face. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done, all you're doing, all you will do. In Jesus' name, gracious God, give us the power to be able to do things together as Christians without caring about who gets the credit. Equip our minds, dear God. Let us grow more like you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I know, Father, that you are greater than any problem that I have. Lord, forgive us, fill us, clean us. Give us the wisdom to understand. Make us thine own. Lord, keep us dripping in the powerful blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. That's Revelations 11, 12. I'm reading from 1 John 3, 8. He who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's works. I'm reading from Colossians 2.15. In this way, God took away Satan's power to accuse you of sin, and God openly displayed to the whole world Christ's triumph at the cross, where your sins were all taken away. I'm reading from Proverbs 6, 2 through 5. If you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth, then do this, my son, to free yourself. Since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands, go and humble yourself. Press your plea with your neighbor. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. We have some power keys for you today. Power keys from God to you today. Number one, your failures are planned by Satan. Your victories are planned by God. You see, see Satan knows he cannot defeat God, so he attacks the children of God. You must know that Satan's constant attack on you means that he has not conquered you yet. And Satan only attacks those that are about to have a breakthrough. My dear brothers and sisters, spiritual warfare always surrounds the birth of a miracle. And just because you don't see the miracle with your little natural human eyes don't mean the miracle didn't manifest. It makes me wonder why Satan's fighting us so hard sometimes. Well, he must know something that we don't. He must know something good is about to happen. You don't hear me today, brothers and sisters. Please put your ears on. I said he must know something good is about to happen. As I said, Satan only attacks those who are about to have a breakthrough. Now let me ask you, how many times before we broke through something did we quit? It's spiritual warfare. Satan didn't know what a problem was until he was dealing with a dead Jesus. See, Jesus died, but Christ didn't. See, Christ is the spirit, and spirits don't die. Christ, you see, is the original Ghostbuster. Everybody, if you will, take your finger and point it at the end of your nose. Number two, the biggest enemy that you will face is not the devil. Our biggest problem is the person that we are, have just pointed at. 
jealousy, envy, strife, lust. Oh, my friends, my dear brothers and sisters, we must overcome. We must walk in the spirit. You see, if we walk in the spirit, we will not walk in the flesh. Please listen today. Every piece of ground our feet threads on, we can possess. Romans 4, 17, that is what the scriptures mean when they say that God made Abraham the father of many nations. God will accept all people in every nation who trust him as Abraham did. And this promise is from God himself who makes the dead live and speaks of future events with as much certainty as though they were already past. Every failure is not fatal. Winning is never easy. However, winning is simple. But winning is never easy. To win with God, it takes grit, persistence, perseverance, determination. We must pursue to overcome. Now, the only time you become an overcomer is when your enemy has been your footstool, has become your footstool. All men get knocked down. Great men get up. So get up when you get knocked down. Don't let the devil lie to you and cause you to stay laying down. For 40 years, Moses was nothing. God picked him up when he was 80 years old. I want you to notice something in that statement. You are never too far gone for God to pick you up. Never too far gone. Jesus is a specialist. He'll pick you up and make a victor out of you. Now, you might say, oh, but Brother Rick, I'm so spotted. I have so much bad that I've done. Hey, I want to tell you today, from my experience with Jesus, he's an all-purpose spot remover. I want you to know that they call Jesus a failure. Jesus who fed the multitude with five loaves and two fishes. The same Jesus who made the blind to see. The same Jesus who healed the sick. The same Jesus who touched the lepers and cleansed them. The same Jesus who made the dead to rise. So get up and quit bathing in self-pity. Jesus will take that stony heart out of you. He will get right down in that mess with you and pick you up and cover you with his blood. God does not pass out cancer. He takes them out. Jesus is the great physician. God don't put it on you. He takes it off you. If you wait on the Lord, he will give you power to see the invisible. Natural eyes can't see, but spiritual eyes can. But you must continuously praise and worship God and pray to him and wait upon him. You must. You must. You must wait on the Lord. You can't put God on a time clock. It's God's divine timing that brings forth miracles. Praise has the power to change your attitude. Praise has the power to alleviate pain. Praise will bring you up. Try a praise break, may I suggest. Try a praise break at work instead of a coffee break. God is good in every situation. Every situation. So when you wake up, and the devil is on you, fall on your knees and say, how great thou art, God, Jehovah God, in Jesus' name. Talk to Jesus. He'll take him off you. He'll take the devil right off you. Know that God is not lost. We are the ones that are lost. God has got the same address, same phone number. Call him up. You too then will see that the blues won't hang around you that long if you know how to praise and worship God. You'll get the strength that you need. God will strengthen your heart every time you get down. Just repeat, God is a good God and that's good news for the blues, see? Praise is the soil in which joy thrives. Praise is the debt we owe to God for all the blessings we receive. And we must pray to God and we must worship God. See, prayer offers God the opportunity to speak to us, to give to us, and to work through us. Now, many prayers end up in the dead letter office because they lack sufficient direction. If you, my friend, are a stranger to prayer, then you are a stranger to power. Prayer must mean something to you if it is going to mean something to God. 
Pray as if everything depends on God and work hard as if everything depends on you. Pray hard when you find it hard to pray. You see, prayer is a place where burdens change shoulders. If you're too busy to pray, then you're too busy. Praise can make your days. We have two advocators in heaven. We have Jesus. On earth, we have the Holy Spirit. Now, we all know the Holy Spirit is our comforter. If you are saved, you will get your inheritance from God. The Holy Spirit is here to see to it. Now, the reason we have to keep getting saved over and over and over, I think we do, is because we have not yet made our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Let me share something with you, my dear brothers and sisters. If you want to be on good terms with Jesus, you'd better get on good terms with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something else. Education does not produce one ounce of revelation. Some will choose education over life. We in the church really know little about trusting the word. May God forgive us. I'm telling you, you'd better start trusting the word of God. Now, in order to trust the word, you must read the word for it yourself. There will be times, you see, there will be times that your buddies can't help you. You need God. When the doctor says he's got bad news, and maybe he does, but that bad news is for man. But God's word is the last word, not man's. Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus. You and your household believe in the Lord Jesus. You have seriously got to give it to God. Trust God. Give your heart to God. I found out he won't break it. He'll mold it. Don't be afraid. Listen, look at it logically. God cannot mess your life up any more than you have. Give it to the Lord. Don't be afraid. God wants you to know that fear is to faith what darkness is to light. Now, darkness cannot dwell where light is present and fear cannot dwell where faith is present the word works prayer changes things the word works so if you're a junkie so you don't think you can get set free from that Isaiah 41 10 says so do not fear for I am with you do not be dismayed or discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So let every man be a liar and let God's word be true. So fear not and stand on the word of God. You see, it's the precious blood of Jesus that sets us free. You say you've got sickness. I say we've got a healer. You say you've got mountains. I say we've got a mountain mover. You say you've got devils, I say we've got God. You don't believe it? Then you don't believe the word. And God is not interested in your private interpretations of the word either. And speaking of private interpretations, we all know Christ is going to be revealed through the church. Now first know that the church is not a place. The church is a people. Now I'm not gonna just try to waste your time today so please listen up I'm gonna shoot from the hip and from the lip God has no problem with denominations no more than he has a problem with races denominations have a problem with God God wants to stretch us and fill us with the Holy Spirit and we must be open because we don't have it all no one's got it all. No one. You see, we cut ourselves off from God through one another. Please listen today. The word of God does not need man's defense. God's word stands on its own. Listen, Simon Peter denied Jesus. Only the grace and love of God changed Simon Peter. Think about it. We don't need to go back where we were. We need to go on to where he is. When you begin to see Jesus, then you will be able to see what Jesus sees. There's peace that prevails in all those storms. It's not your responsibility to save anyone. We are to witness. We will never be God, but we can love like God. We need to pour God's love out on everyone. 
Let's love another regardless of their denomination. We need to love the lost world. Jesus never kicked Judas out. Jesus loved him. When you fall in love with Jesus, you will start to love everyone. Let's love one another. Jesus is the answer, the only answer. We must stop lying. We must start obeying. Don't say you love Jesus and you don't love one another. If you don't love your brother, you can't know Jesus. We must forgive like God forgives. Everyone needs to find their way into Christ today. Everyone. If you have lost at home and you don't feel confident to try to explain that everyone needs to find their way today, get this tape and play it for them. The tape is free. We'll tell you how to get it at the end of the message. They need to hear it. Get it for them. You have to be born of the Spirit to get in the family of Christ. Jesus' light is greater than the darkness of our sins. God is love, my friends. God wants you to know that love is not having a need, but love is fulfilling a need. Don't let yourself get locked up in a high-tech, super-denominational faith. God wants you to know that he keeps everything simple for us. Because if God was to be complicated, we'd miss him. And to miss God is to miss the love he has provided for us. You see, God is our greatest lover. Heaven on earth is an attitude. You see, sometimes God will let you go through something to get to something. You see, sometimes God will allow you to get into something so that he can get you out of it. Sometimes God will allow you to get your pockets empty so that he can fill them up. Praise is God's address, and God never has an answering machine on his phone. He takes each call personally. The way to call him up is to praise him. Now, God lives at the intersection of Hallelujah Boulevard and Glory Street. If you lose his number, hey, don't look in the yellow pages. Look in the holy pages. Dial one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. Most have dialed the right number, but are in the wrong area code. Number three, a poison tongue will poison your life. The speech nerve controls all other nerves in your body. What comes out of your mouth either poisons or heals. I want you to know that the greatest sense that Satan can sense is your mouth, the sense of speech. You see, what comes out of your mouth will get you and keep you in trouble. If you don't feel right about what you have to say, if you don't think what you're talking about is spirit-filled, then shut up. It's easy. That seems like wisdom to me. It's easy to stay out of vocal trouble. Just shut up. You see, the only power the devil has over you is the power you give him. And the worst habit we all have is the loose tongue. Listen, my friends, the best way to break a bad habit is not to have it. So drop it. Just learn to shut up. You see, problems usually start with your mouth. You sell a bill of goods with talk. Then you have to prove that you sold a good bill of goods. So you go into action to prove a lie, which you can't prove. And even if you get close to proving your lie, then all you've done is proved a lie. That's what used to happen to me anyway. My friends, you can never be Mr. Big anyway with your tiny thoughts of thinking and you, you want to be Mr. Big? Brothers and sisters, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they who indulge, though, those who indulge it shall eat the fruit of it, death or life. That's Proverbs 18, 21. There's a Bible secret of words. Words are spiritual. They carry power. The words are, the words we speak are of vital importance to our lives. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 20, 12, 36 and 37, I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof the day of judgment. For by the words Thy shalt be justified, and by thy words thy shalt be condemned. Hebrews 11.3 Through faith 
we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By what? The word of God. In other words, God spoke the world into existence as evidenced in the first chapter of Genesis. And God said, let there be light. Now, the Hebrews Bible says, God said, light be and light was. All power in the natural, physical world came into being when God spoke those words. And God said, let there be firmament. And God said, let the waters be gathered together. And God said, let the earth bring forth glass. I want you to think about something. The words, and God said, appears 10 times in the first chapter of Genesis. Now, to the natural mind, the repetition is almost monotonous. But through the spiritual understanding, you will realize that the Holy Spirit had it written that way to stress how vital a part words played in creation. You see, each time God spoke, he released his faith, the created power to bring his words to pass. God created all things by the power of his words. God's words produce exactly what he says. What God wants you to know is God's method of operation never changes. When God speaks, power is released and things move. Man was created from the faith-filled words of God. Words of power, words of dominion, words of life. Adam was created in God's class. Adam was made in the likeness of God and consequently had a free will. Genesis 1.28 says, and God blessed them. To bless means say something good about. He blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Man had total authority to rule as a god over every living creature on earth and he was to rule by speaking words. Man's words would carry the power and anointing of God that was in him from the time he was first created. Please listen. It was not until Satan entered the picture that the power of words was perverted to bring death and destruction. You see, Satan is not a god. He is a fallen angel. He is not in the god class. Consequently, there is no creative power in him. As an angel of God, Satan or Lucifer was forbidden to act by his own will, but he chose to exalt himself over God. You see, Satan tried to use the power of words against God when he said in Isaiah 14, 13 and 14, I will exalt my throne above stars of God. (coughs) Pardon me. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. By choosing his own words, Satan broke a cardinal law in the spirit world. He violated limits of his authority and chose to stand against God. He said, I will be like the most high. But God could not stand for it. God answered, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. That's Isaiah 14, 15. Now at that point their words clashed. And God's word. The word of a free spirit. Of spirit with authority. Reigned victoriously over the word of an angelic power. And immediately Satan was expelled from heaven. By using cunning and deception. Satan came in the form of a serpent. And said to Eve. Can it really be that God hath said? Now, 1 Timothy 2.14 says the woman was deceived. But I want you to know that Adam knew what he was doing when he disobeyed God's command and took of the the forbidden fruit. Now, through that disobedience, Satan was able to obtain authority in the earth. He became man's God, or as 2 Corinthians 4.4 calls him the God of this world. But please get this. This is good. Though Satan has no creative power of his own, Satan uses the creative power of man's words to manipulate the circumstances of the world. You see, everything that Satan produces is only a counterfeit of the real. Satan takes what God has already created and perverts it to his own use. Satan desires to use men's tongues. Tongues of creatures in the God class are much more powerful than Satan himself. Please know that. Number four, nip destructive thoughts in the bud, bud. You must understand, my dear brothers and sisters, all battles are fought in the mind. 
The mind is the battlefield. In other words, you are what you think. In other words, you will act out what you fantasize about. Even your body will act out what your mind continuously think about. First know that these are pictures in your imagination that we call dream seeds. Please put your ears on today. Wake up if you're not. As I said, the mind is the battlefield. And there are three important master keys to winning the battle against Satan and keeping your dream seed in focus. The first key is respect. You've got to respect your dream seed. You've got to respect what God gives you. Now, let me define dream seed for you. A dream seed is an invisible picture manifested in your subconscious. In other words, a picture in your imagination. Your dream seed is what controls your reaching in life to move forward or to pursue the purpose of God's will in your life. Now, when your dream seed is out of focus or blurred or out of vision totally, you won't make progress in your life because, you see, your entire energy, your entire faith life is controlled by the photograph in your spirit. I must tell you this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Also, when your dream seed becomes weak in your mind, you'll become an easy target for everything that Satan wants to throw at you. Remember the little woman who had an issue of blood in Mark 5? She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I could be made whole. I want you to see that it was that invisible picture, that dream seed sustained in the gallery of her mind was what moved her where she passed and pressed her way through the crowd and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. So you see, you must respect your dream seed. What you will respect, you will attract. And what you don't respect will move away from you. What you don't regard highly, you will lose. The second key is desire. You've got to desire that dream seed. You've got to desire that dream seed. It's not enough to need it. You've got to desire it enough to pursue it. And the proof of desire is pursuit. You see, if I desire to read the Holy Word of God, if I have a desire to read this Bible and don't pursue it, then I really don't have a desire, do I? The same applies to if I don't have a desire to pursue saying or staying in the fight of staying in faith, then my desire is dead and my faith will soon be dead. Faith without works is dead. Desire without pursuit is dead also. You see, people that really love God will seek God's wisdom and they will be rewarded because God will bring those people to remarkable experiences with him. And I have a great craving to understand God. And I feel like not very many people do. Not very, maybe, not very many people want to understand God. And that's evident because not that many people pursue him. And I personally believe that's why God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God wants you all to know. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God wants you all to know that you can't put the pieces of your life's puzzle together by yourself. Self-surgery won't work. You need God to help you. The third key is the power key. It is the imagination. The imagination is the invisible machine that God puts in your head to picture something that does not exist in the natural, but it exists in your mind. Your mind has two functions, the memory and the imagination. The purpose of your memory is to replay the past. The purpose of your imagination is to preplay your future. You see, the purpose of your memory is to recycle a photograph that already exists in your mind, your heart, and your life. Now, winners, successful people have discovered the secret of reaching back in their past and extracting a photo of one of their past good decisions or one of their past triumphs or one of their past victories. And they replay that and it emotionalizes them again to pursue their next victory. Example, David replayed his past triumphs when he went to fight Goliath. David said, hey, I remember being in this situation before. I remember when a lion came and I ripped his head off. I remember killing a bear. You see, David replayed the experience of killing the lion and the bear, and his mind focused on that, and it energized him for Goliath. Now, losers, consistent losers, are people who repeatedly replay their past failure experiences. Example, the widow woman when Elijah said, 
What are you thinking about? She said, Diane, I'm two pancakes away from heaven. And Elijah looked at her and said, we've got to change that imagination of yours. He said, now, get a photograph of supply. See your bills being paid. See the meal barrel full. See the crude of oil never failing. See supply coming instead of leaving. Example, Israel never made it inside of Canaan because they misused their picture machine. They saw giants and they said, we're like grasshoppers. We even asked the giants and they said, yeah, you guys are like grasshoppers. Hey, you've got to speak in line with God's best. I'll come back to this. Number five, bury your past. Word keys, bury your past. Word power keys, number five. Bury your past or your past will bury you. You see, he who looks to the past will never have a future. When you live in the past, you forget your future and your present. It is impossible to go forward with your head turned around looking backwards all the time. Ask the football player. The only thing in the past is defeat. All the wishing and the wanting to change the past in the world is nothing. It's like trying to push a car uphill with a rope. The past is dead. The future is life. The present is life. Right now. Live right now. The worst enemy of success is your last one. Don't let the past kill your future. In other words, get up and get going God's way. Go God's way. Regretting something in the past is death to the future. Forget it. Bury it. Regret is the most of the most useless yet deadly emotions known to man. Example, I wish I hadn't done that. Why did I do that? I really blew that. I wished I could have. I wished I could have changed it. I regret it. Please listen today. Regret don't change one thing. It's over, so be healed. Let regret die in the past. Get up and get going God's way. You see, we always reach for the strongest things in our imagination. Please get this. Satan's entire effort is to control your imagination. Then he punches his imagination on in your head. Now, it is just as bad for you as to let Satan control your imagination as for you to picture yourself losing. Saints, you're going to have to start feeding your minds with pictures of the word of God. No evil will I put before thee. I believe the imagination is where you win or lose the whole game of life. I believe it controls everything in your life because we always move in the direction of our most dominant thoughts in our imagination. You see, whatever your eyes continuously admire, your heart will definitely desire. Saints, you're going to have to start feeding your minds and hearts with pictures of the Word of God. Pictures of the Word of God. Was it Job that said, my eye vexed my heart? Was it Jesus who said, whatever comes through the eye has power in this life? I believe you ought to set a certain amount of time every day to study the Word of God. I believe you ought to ask the Holy Spirit to come in and be with you every day. I believe you ought to make a move with, you ought not make one move without the Holy Spirit. I believe you should ask the Holy Spirit to be with you and guide you. Whew. I'm telling you, my dear brothers and sisters, the Word of God will paint a picture on the inside of your walls of you hitting the finish line as a champion. The Holy Spirit will paint a picture on the inside of you standing on top of Goliath with his head cut off and your sword in your hand. The Jesus I know will give a picture of you like Joseph sitting on the throne. The Jesus I know will give you a picture of blind eyes opening with sight. The Jesus I know will give you a picture of the lame walking. The Jesus I know will give you a picture of the dumb talking. The Jesus I know, the Savior I know, will give salvation to the raggedy, to the perverted, to the dope smoking, to the alcohol drinking, to the lying, cheating, stealing sinner like you and me. Please repeat this prayer. Father God, I confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. 
I believe in my heart he died and was raised from the dead. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hey. 